On this edition of Lexington Now, the Friends Bookseller expands, a local star comes home, and your Lex PD. I'm Neil Noah. Welcome to Lexington Now for the week of January 8th, 2024. The Friends of the Library Bookseller is one of the Central Library's most popular offerings and is now better than ever. Rod Brotherton tells us why. My name's Rod Brotherton. I'm proud to be the president of the Friends of the Library Association and we are in the downstairs of the main Central Library on Main Street here in Lexington. Friends of the Library is an organization that's been around since 1968. And what our job is, is to provide a retail outlet for donations that are made to the library and books that have been taken from circulation. Our job is to support the library and all the net profits that we make go directly back to the Lexington Public Library. For example, this year we have already given $22,500 to the Marksbury branch, which is the newest branch of the Lexington Public Library, which will be opening in the first quarter of 2024. We're really glad that we can do this because the, uh, the Marksbury branch will be a central focal point for the Latino community in that part of town. And they will use the library extensively. And we are glad that this is another branch that we're bringing online to complement the rest of the communities that, here, uh, that are being served by the library in Lexington. The library uh, offers us space at no charge in the basement, so we're very grateful for the opportunity to serve the library here in the central location downtown. But with the basement location, it has been very difficult to try to figure out the best configuration. And for years, we had this one little room and a storage room in the back. But with putting our heads together, we found out that we can uh, make more room and open our storage room while using the existing infrastructure that was given and actually double the space that we've had for patrons to come in and look at all our books. We will have more than 20,000 books uh, for sale and which will have, uh, we've had our opening day on the 6th this last Saturday and we just look forward for everybody to come down and see all the things that the library has to offer. We will be open every day, 10 to 4, Saturdays from 10 to 4, and the first Sunday of the month from 1 to 5. Anything that you want to fuel your passion for knowledge, we can help you with. Just let us know what you're looking for, and we'll try to get it for you. Knowledge in open societies are the key to equality and justice. And if we don't have that, then we're going to have problems. But uh, all, our, all open societies have vibrant library systems. And what we do by giving money back to the library uh, is one of the things that because of the way that the tax structure is, is organized here in Fayette County and some other areas across the country, the, the monies that are granted to a library operation are very restrictive. And so the things that we provide by giving money back to the library are things that are typically not uh, allowed under the tax structure as it is. So it gives them a little more freedom to do things and make donations, like we said, to the Marksbury branch for this year, or buying things that are outside the budgetary constraints of the, the normal uh, allocations of tax revenues benefits everybody. One of the other things we do is we take donations typically on Monday and Tuesday from 10 to 2. Uh, just call us at 231-5505. We'll come up and meet your car in the breezeway between Main and Water Street, take them out for you, and we'll give you tax receipts if necessary. And if those times don't work, please call us and let us know what will, and we'll make special arrangements to come even and pick books up if necessary, uh, as some of the books that we get, approximately 2,000 a week, come from the public, which are a lifeline for us. We do wonderful things, and hopefully you'll be part of it as well. A hometown Tony-nominated Broadway star returned home this past week and was given the key to the city. We were there for the ceremony. 
I am joined today by Lexington native and Broadway star Colton Ryan and Lindy Franklin Smith, co-founder and artistic director of the Lexington Theater Company. From the dazzling lights of Broadway in New York City to the dazzling lights of the Lexington Opera House that sits on the corner of our very own Broadway, Colton Ryan is taking the stage by storm. Recently, Colton was nominated for a Tony Award for his role in the Broadway show, New York, New York. What an outstanding accomplishment. Yay. Aside, yes. <laughs> Aside from owning the Broadway stage, Colton is also known for his roles in film and television, including the Broadway and film production of Dear Evan Hansen, as well as television's The Girl from Plainville and Little Voice. Although Colton has had national success, he still holds tight to his Lexington roots. In 2016, Colton made his debut with the Lexington Theater Company in Concert with the Stars as a rising collegiate star. Concert with the Stars is a cabaret style concert of show tunes interwoven with behind the scenes stories. In 2018, Colton returned to Concert with the Stars as a Broadway veteran. Then in 2019, he starred in the summer main stage production of West Side Story for the Lex. Colton is once again bringing his talents back to the bluegrass to headline the Lexington Theater Company's 2024 edition of Concert with the Stars. It will feature an evening of solo performances by Colton. The show will also feature some special guests, including students and teaching artists from the Lexington Theater Company's Artist Development Program. The Lexington Theater Company has a mission to serve as a training ground for the next generation of musical theater artists, all while producing professional music theater that promotes the experience of masterful storytelling. Husband and wife duo, Lindy and Jeremy Smith, have taken their talents and experiences on New York's Broadway and brought them to Broadway here in Lexington to create what has become a cornerstone of our vibrant arts and entertainment community. Now, while Colton was growing up here, right here in Lexington, the Lexington Theater Company hadn't been born yet. So our first chance to get to work with him was in his college days. And in 2016, on a weekend very much like this one, on this very stage, Colton joined us as one of those collegiate rising stars. It was evident that his star was on the rise and that something was indeed coming for this brilliant artist and that something was more beautiful work on and off Broadway, on television and in film. It's not every day someone from Lexington stars in a Broadway musical and makes multiple appearances on TV and in film, but Colton is leading the way. And he, we are so proud of him. I've told him this over and over. Lexington, we have a real star here. He's a wonderful example of what hard work and determination produces. I know it's got to be hard work, right? It can, it can be. It can so be. <laughs> He's inspiring the future generation of performers and artists here at home and beyond. So Colton, for Colton, Lexington will always be his home. And at this time, I want to present you with a key to the city. So, wow. this is very special. It's in a wooden box. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we aren't exactly sure which doors it opens, but it opens everyone's heart here. Oh. Turn, it, turn it around and show. It's, it's a big key. Yeah. I think we could find that lock. It's pretty I big. think we could. The teachers that I was afforded growing up here in Lexington 
at the School for the Creative and Performing Arts. They saw me completely before I could even see myself. Arts education, luckily, in my household was accessible by right, actually by force, <laughs> in my household. And it has been the greatest luxury of my life. I don't f believe it should be a luxury. I, I believe it should be by right for all children. And thankfully, this town believes that mission too. And so I just want to say thank you for that. And thank you, SCAPA, and all the institutions that made me who I am today. When we come back, welcome your Lex PD. I'm Lieutenant Chris Van Brackle with the Lexington Police Department Traffic Unit. Today we are talking about disability accessible parking and the aisles between those parking places. Accessible parking is a valuable and necessary resource for people with disabilities, and that includes the striped area next to accessible parking spots. These are access aisles, and it is illegal to park here, even if you have an accessible parking permit. Police in Lex Park will write tickets when they see vehicles parked in an access aisle or parked in an accessible space without a placard, and the fine is $250. Know where and where not to park. Keep the access aisles clear. Thank you, and drive safe. Welcome back to Lexington Now. If you're a regular Lex TV viewer, you've no doubt seen our newest program, Your Lex PD. We caught up with our two hosts to get to know them a little better. I'm Officer Bodge Tower of the Lexington Police Department and one of the co-hosts for Your Lex PD. So Your Lex PD is an overview of the police department. It's a way to connect the community and the police department to let them know all about us because after all, we're Your Lex PD. So whether it's a highlights on specialized units or whether it's safety tips, it's working the community, it's the community and the police department working together. So back in early 2000s, we had a show at the Lexington Police Department that was called Keeping the Peace. And retired Officer Debbie Wagner and retired Chief James Jackson were the hosts of that show. And it did a very similar thing to, to what we're doing today with your Lex PD. So back in 2019, we decided to kind of reinvent it and bring it back because we felt like it was really good information for the public to have and let them know what we're doing for them and what we can do with them. So the pandemic occurred and that certainly put a, a damper obviously on the time frames and so forth. So several months ago, it kind of, we revisited Felt like it was a good time to do it and went ahead with the help of Lex TV, got the ball rolling. So we started out the very first episode with the chief of police and we felt like it was a good way to introduce him to anybody in the community that really didn't know him. From there, we're going into everything from hot topics to specialized units and highlights of units. So we have done a variety of different things so far. The Arctic was, a, was an early episode that we did, which is the real-time intelligence center. Things that a lot of people didn't know about or things that maybe they had received inaccurate information, we were able to give them accurate information and show them what we're actually doing with technology to help keep Lexington safe. So that's kind of where we started with that. So I have a couple of different jobs with the police department. I'm in the Bureau of Special Operations. So I work in both the community services section and the air support unit as a tactical flight officer. I have been a tactical flight officer for five years. I've been on the police department in January will be 27 years. Uh, I've worked with the community the majority of my career. I've worked with young people. The, the air support unit, for somebody that had been on over 20 years, starting, it was like starting a new career. So it's, it's been exciting for me and, and I've truly enjoyed that as well. Nicole Owings, she is a great co-host. She is assigned to Bureau of Patrol. So that gives us a little different perspective. We, we have two completely different jobs at the police department, but she's doing a great job with this as well. 
uh, we, we're really getting to know each other's jobs, and that's one of the things that's coming up. I'm going to be doing a ride along with her with patrol, and in a few months she's going to come back, and we're going to do a ride along and let her ride with me in the helicopter. I'm Nicole Owings. I'm a Lexington police officer with Lexington Police Department, and I am one of the co-hosts of Your Lex PD. How me and Baj met when this initially, when him and I believe it was Sergeant Barry, when they first were trying to put this, and it had a whole different name. So when they were first putting this together, um, my name was, was brought up. Um, I had done a lot of mentoring in the school systems um, from like elementary all the way to high school. Um, so I was, even though I was third shift, I was still very active during the day, still doing work-related things and, and whatnot. And I had gotten like an officer of the year and I had gotten some officers of the month. So people kind of knew who I was and knew I was kind of out there in like public speaking. So they had brought the idea to me and I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be cool. So that's kind of where our, like our partnership friendship kind of started. January will be 12 years for me. It's going to sound kind of cliche, but um, I was bullied in middle school. And so when I got through that and just got some confidence, um, I was an athlete, um, got around the right people, built up my confidence and my self-esteem. I was like, you know, I don't, no one bullied me ever again, but I've always wanted to take up for those that couldn't take up for themselves. So that's kind of like what we do. Um, we kind of help those that can't help themselves. Um, and sometimes we help those that don't know that they need help themselves. And so we kind of help them that way. So that kind of drew me into this line of work. I didn't grow up wanting to be um, a police officer. <laughs> I'm a science geek. <laughs> All my degrees are mostly in science related fields. Um, but sometimes the, your plan is not the plan that God puts you. And I was just kind of steered in this direction and I've not looked back. I always say patrols like kind of being in the trenches. <laughs> I like challenges. So um, on patrol, we're like your very first responders. Uh, we have detectives, we have a lot of specialized units, but everything starts with uh, those of us that are on patrol. So we're kind of like your, your front man, if you will. Um, we just get a variety of different calls. Um, calls for service, not necessarily criminal offenses, sometimes even um, civil matters. And we try to deal with them as best we can, even though we don't really deal with a lot of civil matters. We are more on the criminal side of things. Um, but I just, I've always loved challenges. And so it's challenging doing different things. I'm also an FTO, which is a field training officer. So when people go through the academy and they graduate, they have 15 weeks of FTO. Um, and so I do like to train and getting into all these different things and trying to get them as much experience as possible. So when they go out on their own, they at least have a good foundation and a base, and then they can kind of work and build themselves for the officer that they're gonna be. I've always had like, some type of supervisory positions. I was a training sergeant at Animal Control. Um, I was the captain of my high school track team. I was on a track scholarship to EKU and I was the captain of that team. And then when I worked on getting my master's, I was also a graduate assistant, assistant coach. And I did the testing and I was an NCAA division one coach. So I have always been in like a position of teaching and uh, whatnot. So I just, I just enjoy teaching and helping people along the way. We just encourage people to watch the show because it is really good information. A lot of things, and we've, we've had a lot of comments, a lot of feedback already. People are learning things they didn't know about the police department. And it's a, it's a way for us to reach out and show Lexington what we're doing to try to help keep Lexington one of the safest cities in the United States. The Christmas season is behind us, and as you take down your decorations, you'll want to know what to do with your broken lights. Seth Holbrook tells us how to dispose of them through this weekend. Holiday recycling is starting here in Lexington once again. The Division of Environmental Services is beginning its holiday light and electronics uh, collection program that will continue through January 14th of 2024. So there's all kinds of time for folks to get their holiday lights, their cords of all kinds, like extension cords and rope lights, Electronic candles, all different kinds of things like that can be taken to any one of our 11 different drop-off locations located across Fayette County. That way things can be properly disposed of and hopefully easily disposable for all of the different folks. None of uh, those electronic waste items should be placed in curbside recycling carts ever just because they pose a risk to our recycling center staff and the machinery located there. Uh, lights can easily get tangled in the machinery and causing delays and issues with uh, breaking the machinery itself, as well as the electronics posing a safety risk to the uh, staff who work there and uh, deal with all of those items during sorting. 
So right now, during our electronics recycling program, we're accepting holiday string lights, as well as rope lights, electronic candles, um, extension cords, things like that, uh, as well as uh, small other uh, electronics like bulbs and things like that. The Electronics Recycling Center, which is open year round, uh, located on Purcell's Road, typically operates six days a week, Monday through Saturday, although hours change, especially during the holiday season. It's always recommended that folks visit lexingtonky.gov slash e-waste to find out more information about that center. But they accept those items year round uh, and they accept a full list of items as well, including things like uh, computers, printers, copiers, um, ink cartridges and toner cartridges to go along with those things. The cables typically associated with all of those items, so HDMI cables, coaxial cables, USB and power cables, uh, microwaves, televisions, uh, computer monitors, vacuums, CDs, DVDs, VHS tapes, cassette tapes, all of those. During light collection, we're not accepting any of those larger items that are typically accepted by the Electronics Recycling Center. Um, we're just collecting the items that are most likely to come up this time of year. So the holiday lights, the string lights, um, other plug-in items that uh, typically come with decorating the home. Um, there are uh, other uh, unacceptable items for the Electronic Cycl Recycling Center as well. Uh, when it comes to dropping off items at the Electronics Recycling Center, um, things need to be intact. So they uh, will accept broken items, they don't need to work, but uh, items such as TVs with broken screens or microwaves with the glass broken out of them, things like that, anything that would pose a risk to the staff there as well are not acceptable. For this current campaign, for more information, including uh, the full list of those 11 locations located around the city, folks can go to lexingtonky.gov slash lights. Uh, and for general information about electronic waste recycling, folks can visit lexingtonky.gov slash e-waste. We've got a bit of meeting coverage for you this week on Lex TV, and you can catch the gavel to gavel action here and streaming on our website. And remember, you can find all the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business at LexingtonKY.gov. Here's this week's meeting coverage. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on X at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it.